Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 272, closest binary search tree value 2. Before we get into it, you guys know the drill, subscribe to the channel, it helps me grow. Alright, given the root of a binary search tree, a target value and an integer k return the k values in the binary search tree that are closest to the target. You may return the answer in any order. You are guaranteed to have only one unique set of k values in the binary search tree that are closest to the target. So let's look at an example where we have this uh, simple binary search tree and we're given a target of 3.714286. Why in the world they couldn't just give us a regular target instead of this long ass decimal number? I don't know. Leak code be wild in sometimes. Anyway, and k equals 2. So we want to find the two elements that are closest to 3.7 whatever. Uh, so, you know, upon inspection, we can see that those two are going to be the 3 and the 4. Uh, because the distance between that, uh, this number, and 3 and 4 uh, are the two smallest distances. Uh, if we were to calculate with 2, 5, and 1, those would all be greater than uh, 4 and 3. So in this case, we would return 3, 4. So... You know, visually inspecting a binary tree and picking out the best answers are quite easy. How do we actually put this into code? Well, let's talk about some of the approaches you could take to this problem because there are multiple approaches and we will converge on what should be one of the best answers. We read the question prompt and we went over a simple example, but we didn't really talk about how we actually want to solve this. So let's go through some approaches. So we know that we have what? We have a binary search tree, right? and we're looking for the k closest values to a certain target. So what we could do in our first approach would be an in-order traversal of this tree, which we know that an in-order traversal of a binary search tree will give us all of the values in sorted order. And then what we want to do is simply sort the array uh, based on um, distance to the you know value target right so this will give us uh, a sorted array now it's already sorted but we have to resort it to essentially get the closest value to um, you know to, to our target so we can sort based on a criteria of you know how far is it so we'll use like absolute value of the current value in the array uh, to the target right and we'll get a sorted one and then we can simply return this new sorted list, the first k elements of that list, and we're good to go. Unfortunately, the in order we can do in log of n time, or sorry, in big O of n time, but the sort we know is going to take n log n, which means that our you know total time complexity is going to be big O of n log n. So this works, and it's fine. It's not a you know a terrible solution, but obviously, can we improve on this? So your second solution is going to be to do the same thing we're going to still do an in order traversal uh, but this time around instead of sorting we can actually just use a heap here heap um, to basically keep track of those k elements and we know that this heap is going to be big o of n log k where k will be the number of elements in the heap obviously each heap check is going to take log n time uh, log k time and we have to find um, you know those n Elements. So we're going to do this. It's going to bring down the time complexity to n log k. If k actually equals to n, then there's no difference between these two. We might as well just do the sort. But if k is actually less than n, then this is a more optimal solution. Again, this solution is fine, and you could do it. Uh, or one solution which I'm going to discuss, but we're not actually going to do, is going to be the quick select algorithm which uh, if you're interviewing at Google, maybe you want to know because they ask this kind of bullshit. But uh, quick select, uh, in the average time, will give you a big O of n solution for this problem. But in the worst case, can be big O of n squared, which is no good because it's actually worse than the other two. So quick select, if your interviewer is looking for quick select, you're in for some pain. Uh, if your interviewer doesn't want quick select, then don't write it because most of you probably don't know it. I don't know it. I don't waste my time with that kind of nonsense. Um, but there is a, another solution, uh, which is actually going to be a, um, you know, an in-order DFS, um, in-order DFS plus 
a Q here. So what we notice um, in this you know, example is that we have to find the K closest elements. And one thing that you can't actually see here because you're not looking at the, the leak code page, but all of the values in the tree are actually greater than or equal to zero, which means that we don't have to deal with negative numbers. And because we don't have to deal with negative numbers, at a certain point in our in order traversal, we will hit a point where numbers just keep increasing, right? And if we start increasing and we're getting further and further away from our target, there is absolutely no reason to continue uh, processing the tree because we know that in an in order traversal, we're just going to get bigger and bigger values as we continue going. So if the values are already too big, then there's no point of us continuing and we can actually cut our DFS down uh, to stop there. So basically we want to, you know, approach our target from the left and look for, you know, the, the K closest elements. And we may need to go a little bit to the right because some of those elements to the right may be closer than the ones that we've done from the left. But at some point, as the numbers increase in our in order traversal, we will hit a cap where it no longer makes sense to continue because the numbers are too big and we're just increasing the distance between target and our value, right? We're not actually getting any closer because the values will increase as we go. So basically what we want to do is we want to approach from the left and keep track of, um, you know, the K, you know, elements that we have and we'll keep them basically in a queue. And what we want to do is after we basically pass the target in terms of value, so say if the target was three, once we start getting values like four five, six in our tree, eventually there's going to come a point where there's no point of going any further because values from the left will actually be closer to target and we can actually just pick the best ones out of, you know, from the right side and then the left side and we can actually cut our um, iteration here because like I said, with the in order, we're just going to be getting larger values and we're not actually going to be finding anything better because the, the distance is just going to keep increasing since there's no negative values in this array. We don't have to worry about um, any of that. So this will actually allow us to basically do it in big O of n time. In the worst case, we're going to have to do a you know, big O of n traversal through the tree because k is actually going to equal to the number of nodes in the tree. So we basically just have to parse all of the nodes in the tree, which is going to mean it's big O of n, uh, which is, you know, the best solution that we can have here because it matches the average time of quick select, but it's actually better than quick select because we don't have this worst time big O of n squared. Obviously, it's better than n log k with the heap solution, and it's definitely better than n log n with the sort solution. So this is actually the solution we want to go with, and it's the most optimal, and we don't have to worry about quick select accidentally giving us big O of n squared because uh, that's not good. So this is actually your most optimal solution, and this is the one that we're going to code up in a second. So let's go to the code editor and write this up so you can see how it works. In the code editor, let's type this up. So remember that we're going to be solving this uh, this problem using a queue to basically keep track of our elements. So that way we always have access to the first element that was added to the queue in constant time. And we can actually get rid of that element in constant time as well using the queues pop left function. So we can't use a regular list because we can't get rid of that element in constant time. So we're going to say queue is going to be collections dot deck. And we're just going to pass in an empty list here. Now we need to define our in order traversal uh, depth for search function. So we're going to say def, oops, def DFS. And this is going to take a node. And remember, if the node exists, we want to go as far left as possible. So we're going to say if node.left, what we want to do, I'm sorry, if node, then we want to say, uh, we want to call the DFS on the node.left. Now remember, in an in order traversal, we go left, then we process the current node, then we go right. So we have just, you know, gone as far left as possible. Now, once that DFS ends, then it's time to actually process the current node. So now we're going to say if the length of our queue is actually less than K, so we haven't seen K elements yet, we're just going to put in our value. So we're going to say queue.append uh, node.val. There's nothing for us to do here. Otherwise, if our queue length is K, then we need to start making a decision of whether or not we need to get rid of elements or we can actually just stop our iteration here. So there's two cases. The first case is when our node.val is actually closer 
than whatever the top of the queue is, in which case we're gonna get rid of the top of the queue, we're gonna add node.val to our queue and then continue with our DFS. The second case is when actually the distance between our current val and whatever the first value we put into the queue is, our, is already too big. So our node.val is actually further than that first value. Therefore, we can actually just stop there. So we're gonna say if the absolute value of whatever q0 minus target is, is actually greater than the absolute value of node.val minus target. So basically in this statement, we're checking is target uh, closer to node.val or is it better? Is it closer to whatever q0 is? So if node.val is actually a better solution, then we just get rid of whatever is at the top of the queue. So we're gonna say q.pop left to basically get rid of this q0 value because node.val is now a better solution. And we're gonna say q.append node.val. Otherwise, in this case, what ends up happening is if we hit this else block, we know that the length of our Q is length K, and we know that Q of zero uh, is basically a better solution than node.val, which means that no matter what happens now, this node.val will just keep increasing because it's an in-order traversal. So the further we go, this node.val is just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger which means that if this solution didn't work, then getting a bigger one is just gonna increase this distance. So there's no point of continuing. So we can simply break there because we will have found our K best solutions. Going to even bigger value is just going to increase the distance. So there's no point of continuing. So we can return there if that's true. Otherwise, uh, if we basically make it through here, so either we hit this, I'll, if we, we either hit this if statement or we hit this if statement, then remember that's an in-order traversal. We still need to go to node.write, uh, which means that we will now complete the kind of um, the DFS. All right, so the last thing we need to do is actually just call our DFS function on the root itself. And at this point, we simply just need to return the queue and those will be our K elements. Let me just run this, make sure it didn't make any syntax mistakes and we look good to go so cool so that submits and you can see it's quite quick because it is uh, one of the most optimal solutions so likely we talked about in the diagram the time complexity here is going to be big o of n and the reason it's big o of n is because in the worst case k will actually equal to the number of nodes in the tree which means that we're going to have to process the entire tree to basically get all of those k values into our queue uh, which is our solution. So that's why it's going to be big O of n because we have to process everything. Uh, so for the space, similarly, our Q in the worst case could end up storing, you know, those K elements. Um, plus, we also have the actual um, recursion in the tree that we need to do with the DFS. So in the worst case, when K equals n, our solution here uh, is just going to be big O of 2n, but we know that asymptotically this is the same as big O of n. So uh, this is going to be a big O of n um, time and big O of n space solution. All right, so that's how you solve this problem. Not the most complicated one. I think once you kind of see uh, how this trick works, this is um, you know something you kind of have to think about. The other solutions are a bit more straightforward. But this one is a bit more like, oh, once you kind of realize this trick where you can end the recursion early um, because you will just be getting greater elements and there's no point of going forward, uh, it makes this problem really easy. And as you can see, the code is quite simple. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking here. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.